MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I really enjoyed that first uh, segment with Mark Bocek and John Ramdeen. And I know uh, you're really going to enjoy this segment with the premier combat sport odds maker in the business. Joey Odessa joins me. Joey, it's always a pleasure. How you doing? Hey, what's happening tonight, G? Coming off a, a big week, and boy, another busy week with the MMA and the uh, Floyd Mayweather fight this week. Yeah, not to mention, yeah, the Mayweather fight. Not to mention, you know, there's the UFC, and there's like uh, pretty much every other MMA company is in business this weekend as well. Just real quickly on this, uh, Joey, we had Mark Bocek on the program earlier and John Ramdeen from the Fight Network, and Ramdeen said he doesn't have a problem uh, with the wrestling-style sideshow that we saw with Tito Ortiz and Bonner and a guy in a mask and Jenna Jameson smack talk and all that. He said whatever brings eyeballs to to the arena or to the television is good. Meanwhile, Mark Bocek said it made him want to turn his TV off and change the channel. What did you think? You know, I'm not a big fan of all that nonsense that was going on. I think it got a little personal. You know, back in 2011, Mitrione and Tito Ortiz got into it over the same type thing. Mitrione made a comment about Tito's wife. And, you know, I think when you when you, you cross the line, when you bring family into it, and I think that was a little, you know, a little overboard. The mask thing, you know, whatever, you know, maybe they're appealing to their audience, you know, the wrestling audience and the, you know, the the entertainment aspect of it. But I, I wasn't big when they started to get personal, you know, that just draws the line for me. I don't have a problem with tinging in and sprinkling some entertainment in there. It's entertainment. People have to realize this. And MMA numbers on TV have not been good guys recently. So, you know, they're trying to shake things up a little bit. But, you know, guys in mass is pushing it. I mean, the UFC staged that with Jones and Cormier. I don't think the UFC did it, but I think Jones staged that throwdown just to try to get some attention. This stuff happens in boxing. It's going to happen. But it was just too over the top. You know, it's, you know, Bonner and Ortiz is kind of dumb in the first place already. Don't make it dumber with this stuff. You know, and, and take away from it because people are already kind of rolling their eyes about about this fight to begin with. Just like betters, Joey, are rolling their eyes about the Alain Quinta Rodrigo damn total situation. And I can't win a total if you showed me the the results the next day on UFC.com, uh, Joey. I haven't won a total bet. I'm like you with the first fight of the night. I haven't won a total bet in like six months. I had the over in the the Chiesa fight. You know, they stop it. Rightfully so. His face was split open. It is what it is. Uh, but a lot of controversy here. And I've seen this before, Joey, in which the guy will hit the canvas. He'll hit the mat. He'll be out. But they don't stop the clock right away. And, you know, sports books grade this on what UFC.com's final results are. And I got pinched like this for like seven seconds. I got into, I was enraged. I was dropping MF this and that over the phone to the sports book, and I got it settled, but it took me about 12 hours of yelling. And I know there's a lot of people upset about this. There's like an 11 second discrepancy, Joey. Well, you know, to make it, to sum it up, I mean, a round and a half is halfway through the second, it's one round plus halfway through the second round. And what happened in that fight was uh, a lot of times they announce it with the time remaining in the round or the time into the round. I mean, it was clearly an under. It was on the video. It should have been graded as an under, but a lot of sports books didn't do it. I had no stake in it, and uh, a lot of people, oh, God, I got so many emails about it, but they were complaining. That, you know, the, in hindsight, the limits that they took on it, you know, the, the PR, the proper PR move would have been just to pay both sides because they made a mistake announcing it, I think. The clock was correct, but the way that they worded it, and then they put it on the site wrong, and... It just started, you know, I didn't really follow the whole thing, but I do know that the, about, that the people that were complaining, obviously the people that got the benefit of the doubt didn't say a word, but the people that were complaining were right. They had every reason to be complaining, and uh, it's unfortunate, but I think PR-wise, to keep a good client, I would have just paid both sides. Uh, it's unfortunate. We already only have two minutes, uh, but there's no numbers for the prelims anyways uh, as of this taping right now. So uh, look at this main event, and no disrespect to... Uh, to Andrei Arlovsky, but it's kind of a reach that he's actually in the UFC right now. I don't know how the hell he beat Brendan Schaub. Like, how bad is Brendan Schaub he can't beat Arlovsky? It's a big number right now, and I like Arlovsky, but he's 35 years old. He's been knocked out a couple of times. He doesn't have the strongest chin, and he's taken on a huge monster in Bigfoot Silva in Brazil. Well, there's not even, you know, if you really look at it, besides Brendan Schaub, uh, 
there's not a big name on on Orlovsky's record, you know, on his record dating all the way back. Well, besides Tim Sylvia, dating back to uh, 2011, and and they're all losses, including a loss to uh, Antonio Silva. We almost have the rerun of uh, you know a rematch of, of a strike force bout here, just like last week in the UFC. Um, you know, Silva beat him once in, in strike force back in 2010, and I don't see how Orlovsky beats him. But this is Silva's first fight in Brazil. You know, you would think that he has his big home field advantage. He's never fought in Brazil. He's fought some amateur stuff over there, and he's from Brazil, but he's never fought in Brazil, which is kind of ironic. Joey Odessa, you can follow him on Twitter, at MMA Odds. And for a complete uh, fight breakdown, tune in every Tuesday night, Sirius XM Channel 167 at 10 o'clock. We're after Corey Erdman at 9 o'clock, who talks boxing. And we break down all the fights. We give you our best bets, or at least early, early week, uh, early leans. Uh, and more, Joey. It's always a pleasure, my man. Thanks for the time. Hey, thanks, Gabe. Have a good one. There's uh, Joey Odessa with us, man. Time just flew by. We'll come back. Uh, we got one video of the week, and we got to wrap it up. MMA Meltdown continues.